is the third integration dialogue of the IW Learn uh, 3 dealing with uh, groundwater and in particular coastal aquifers. We are hosted by the Med Partnership project which is the first GF uh, large marine ecosystem project that has included consideration of coastal aquifers as part of a marine protection project and this is quite interesting and uh, uh, this is probably the main purpose of this dialogue is to show to other projects and other uh, partners the importance of coastal aquifers also in marine protection. Uh, we will hear about the experience of the Mediterranean Partnership in this field and we'll share it with other projects, in particular with the Small Island Development States project uh, of the GF. In fact, we have here the project managers of the uh, Pacific uh, Island Seeds project the Caribbean, two projects in the Caribbean, and the Atlantic and Indian Oceans project. And we are very glad to have them because coastal aquifers in small islands are key to livelihoods and survival. The project will also deal in particular with the assessment of vulnerability of coastal aquifers as a tool for managing the coastal area. And we will hear about three examples of uh, vulnerability mapping carried out during the partnership. We're happy to partner with uh, UNESCO for organizing uh, this workshop in Athens, where the seat of uh, the Global Water Partnership Mediterranean is. The ISSM and IWRM agendas are advancing in the region, but it is often that this is done in separation. Um, it is not a given that these integrated agendas integrate themselves. Uh, the Global uh, Water Partnership uh, works together with uh, UNESCO and uh, the Priority Action Program of uh, UNEP under the Jeff Met Partnership Program in producing a methodological framework for IWRM and ISSM in the region, and we apply that in the north and the south of the Mediterranean. Uh, the whole endeavor is more complicated when it gets to groundwaters, this hidden resource. This meeting uh, has contributed a lot in sharing knowledge and experiences, and I believe that we all need that in order to do our job much, much better for the needs of the people of the Mediterranean. Mediterranean Action Plan was established in 1975. One year later, the Barcelona Convention for the Protection of the Mediterranean Sea was, uh, was adopted. The Barcelona Convention has seven protocols, one for the reduction of land-based pollution, one for the protection of the biodiversity, and then other protocols. Among them is really important the ICTDM protocol, which is the Integrated Coastal Zone Management Protocol. The Protocol on Integrated Coastal Zone Management is a unique legal instrument for the Mediterranean. It uh, establishes many new rules for the management of coastal zones, and uh, in particular for the management of water resources, which are becoming very scarce for the whole region, in particular for the south and the eastern part of the Mediterranean. Uh, aquifers and underground water has a particular attention as well, uh, due to the uh, misuse of uh, resource, which is uh, very uh, important for the future generations. And uh, the protocol gives uh, legal incentives for the future management and in a sustainable way, this very important resource. Within uh, the framework of the Mediterranean Action Plan and the ICZM protocol, uh, a project began in 2009 supported by the GEF, the EC and uh, other donors including participating countries um, called the Strategic Partnership for the Mediterranean Large Marine Ecosystem, uh, the Med Partnership. And an important component of this project is bringing together um, PAPRAC, GWP Med and um, UNESCO IHP in order to integrate approaches for coastal zone management, water resource management and aquifer management. And this is the first time that this is being done in the region. 
In the framework of the MED partnership, UNESCO IHP uh, financed and supported a series of demonstration projects throughout the Mediterranean. And in my case, I worked for the development of the Moroccan pilot case study with a particular attention of the investigation on the Borg coastal aquifer and the nearby lagoon of Nado. The study can be relevant in terms of the results at local level, but also in terms of the importance of this approach and uh, its replicability in the Mediterranean basin and worldwide. I was involved in vulnerability mapping project uh, in Croatia, we choose the one uh, catchment area which is uh, very specific and uh, characteristic for the Nari Karst region and we tested uh, four different vulnerability methods on that uh, catchment area. The UNESCO IHP undertook uh, a project for uh, studying a vulnerability uh, map in, uh, in the Gara and Coastal Aquifer in Tunisia. In this aquifer we have the two aspects of vulnerability, vertical vulnerability due to uh, pollution uh, from surface uh, and horizontal vulnerability to the, due to salt water intrusion. The, go the result of this study was a method, a new methodology uh, for studying these two vulnerabilities uh, simultaneously. Alexandria Coastal Zone Management is about adapting ICZM tools to reduce the pollution loads caused to the Mediterranean Sea from Mariut Lake through El Max Bay. The most important thing, in my opinion, is to get the local society, especially the fishermen community, on board with us and sharing making decision process. Coastal areas are of a strategic importance, especially not only for the population living there, but also related to water resources. If we consider that groundwater is one of the most important water resources existing in the world, if we associate both systems, we may understand that the importance related to these areas and the small islands. After the meeting, during these few days, we have been um, listening to the different participants, their interest and the importance of taking these areas of one of the most important uh, areas to be taken into consideration for further development and for water resources. The resilience of Pacific Island people is somewhat dependent upon the availability of water and its effective management. Greater community engagement and awareness of these water limitations is a key to their resilience in the, into the future. By effectively transmitting and communicating the resource limitations to communities, they are able to better self-manage. Groundwater and aquifer resources remain to be one of the pipeline for the economies of coastal and seas. In all efforts, to ensure their sustainable use, there should be deliberate efforts to bring all stakeholders on a platform for consultation, discussion, and uh, seeking so sustainable solutions. The Caribbean represents a mix of continental, volcanic, and the coral islands. But the one thing that they all have in common is the intense competition among land use activities. Add to that the projected scenarios for climate change and we realize that there is not enough opportunity to get things wrong. Therefore, one of the recommendations coming out of the IWCAM project was a mix of methodologies, approaches and instruments that help in responsible decision making that will help to protect our very fragile groundwater resources. Really? Strategic communications planning um, is vital for a project. It includes 
good stakeholder management. In a case such as the Jeff I.W. Camp project in St. Kitts and Nevis, um, a small island developing state, this was invaluable in helping to bring stakeholders together from all different levels um, to agree on the way forward for this important um, valley, Bastyr Valley, in order to protect the underlying aquifer to the extent that by the end of the project they were able to designate this area as a national park. The participants of the workshop of the last few days have uh, contributed a lot of evidence about the critical situation around coastal areas, the groundwater situation of coastal areas and small island developing states. There is a consensus that something has to be done. Uh, people, the different participants have contributed, uh, highlighting so many different aspects of it, technical, scientific aspects, communication aspects, um, uh, awareness raising aspects, information aspects and so on. It is clear to all of us that uh, something has to be done because of the situation in these areas, these are very fragile, uh, vulnerable areas uh, calls for uh, action that will uh, help uh, uh, producing together a better future. So uh, we can see this, this is a wake-up call that should be spread to other uh, uh, people as well, especially to decision-makers and to politicians who have to become more and more aware of what is at stake with this very invisible groundwater about which so many people know so little. So we have to spread the message. There is a challenge for us as professionals.